Welcome to Rocketship, the home of epic React Native content. I'm Simon Grimm, creator of Galaxies.dev, and today's guest is the man, the legend himself, the maker of Can It Be Done in React Native, William Gandillan. Thanks for joining me. Hey, hi. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to finally have you on. Uh, I think you're one of the names I dropped at least 20 times during all the episodes uh, because I always refer to you as the, the master in your series. So today we're a bit short on time and therefore we're going to skip a bit of the introduction talk. Uh, we want to dive into React Native Skia because recently you had a great release uh, about we, which we should talk. And in general, I feel like there's some 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 mystery around React Native Skia, and I just want to like to learn the basics and how pretty much every React Native developer can get into Skia. So, um, you're an independent developer, and everyone should of course check out your series on YouTube. Um, but what are you currently working on? Just give us a quick quick background of what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, so mainly at the moment, uh, working in React Native Skia. I think we, we've done the release and now that React Native Skia is stable, I think we really want like to focus on documentation. And like you said, like it feels like there's a lot of magic to it. And I think in the past two years, we, things were moving a lot and we were still also trying to figure it out ourselves. But now we think that we, we really understand the picture precisely. So we want to uh, document things better, like also maybe make more tutorials. Uh, now that things are stable, I, I think like education is uh, uh, a strong focus going forward. And um, but also like we're working on some like pretty cool like technical stuff as well. Like we React Native Skia, there's lots of things I'm I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It it looks amazing from the outside and. If you just know a tiny bit about what's going on in the inside, and maybe you can share just a bit of this, I think it's it's really incredible. But before we get into React Native Skia, I just want to take one step back because understanding your React Native Skia, I think, means you also have to understand what what Skia is. So could you explain what is Skia? Where where is it actually coming from, and, and like what does it mean? Yeah, so Skia is a two D engine, and it's an open source project from Google. And it's uh, famously used in, in Google Chrome, Android. Um, so I think Flutter any... Flutter as well, I guess. Yes. Uh, I mean, I guess now some parts of the rendering have been replaced um, mm. on iOS and Android, but uh, on Flutter Web, and I think it's still used to do um, some parts of the renderings, like text renderings and things like this. But yeah, like except for Impeller, which is a new rendering engine from Flutter. I think that any Google product that display pixels are done in using Skia. And um, yeah, so that's what Skia is. And um, and I have to say, like, we, we've we received a lot of support from, from the team at Google who works on the project. Um, a lot of things that we showed in the 1.0 release, uh, they, have, they actually, like... Um, helped us tremendously to be able to ship some of the features, mainly the, um, the Paragraph API stuff, um, where there were like some, quite some challenges to, to be able to, to ship the feature on, on iOS. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've helped us tremendously to, um, yeah. So it's been fun. It's been fun working with the SCIA team. The project is really fun and uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's interesting. I think... I rarely touch Skia. I mean, I've tried Flutter a bit and then it's it's used under the hood, but otherwise I pretty much never used it. And I mean, it's it's interesting. If you watch some videos from like Theo, that's usually the thing he really shits on the most. Like, oh, they're using Skia. They're drawing pixel by pixel. This is the worst thing. And, and now we're bringing this to React Native. So <laughs> tell me why Skia for React Native and why is it actually good? Yeah, I think, uh, so it's so funny because it's like two different ends of the spectrum where, so in Skia, they, so in Flutter, they display all the pixels and the benefit is that you have control over all the pixels. But of course, the big downside is uh, you cannot display native views. And so, I mean, the typical example is emojis, right? So what do you do You for each platform? You have to display the... Like the emoji font from the platform. Yeah. So some of the challenges are, are very hard. 
And us from in React Native, we come from the other side where we, we have access to all the native views. We don't have to play catch up with uh, some of the stuff, but we don't have the full pixel control. And that's what uh, uh, React Native uh, Skia brings. And it's interesting because we are really trying to almost meet in the middle because on our side with React Native Skia, we, we try to give access now to the native views and so you can apply effects on native views and capture the pixels of the native views, which uh, on Android has some challenges. Um, we we went pretty far now, nowadays. We 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 are still aware of some challenges, and we um, we test it a lot. We have some yeah. We use some private APIs of React Native on on Android to be able to to to, to provide such features to access native views. So it's a bit awkward, and Flutter has the opposite problem where it's very awkward for them to be able to also display native views within the Flutter. So it's really interesting because, uh, yeah, we're really like coming from two different ends of the spectrum, and we, uh, yeah, we have like different challenges. But the really cool thing about um, bringing Skia to React Native is really, you know, because we have the JavaScript, the GSX syntax the React declarative model, I think we can really, really have fun providing like a nice declarative APIs um, for making 2D drawings. Um, and even on web, so if you think about just also building uh, uh, graphic intensive app on, apps on webs, it's really nice to have this nice React composable model. And so finally to have the two together, I think is, is quite, uh, quite fun. Yeah, I think in that in that case, it it really makes sense to like bring the best of Skia, which is in itself really interesting. Like bringing the good parts to React Native and saying, okay, you you don't have to like draw your tap navigation or your draw with React Native Skia, but maybe you want to do this cool animation that fills the screen and like your breathing in or something uh, is drawn with that at like the best possible way. So um, yeah, I definitely see how, how this is like the benefit that we can um, use. Now, in the past, I think you were bound a bit like in terms of performance by the bridge in React Native applications. Um, because we all know there's like the bridge between native and our JavaScript thread. And uh, if you send around like, I don't know how many thousand pixels, it's going to be like a very slow animation. Um, how did you improve on that? Um, what is like the internal of React Native Skia right now? I think you're using JSI or not JSI, C++. Like, just give us a glimpse of the internals of React Native Skia and how it can be so performant. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we, indeed we use uh, GSI so we can expose uh, Skia object through so C++ Skia objects to, to JavaScript. And it does come with like some some challenges. So for instance, uh, so we have these C++ objects, but you cannot pass a C++ object as a property to a React Native view because here now you are bound to the to the bridge. I mm -hmm. guess it's something that might change in in a newer version of React Native, but at the moment that's not uh, things that can be possible. Uh, so here we have to play some tricks to bind the, the native view to know, okay, I'm, I need these Skia objects uh, because this needs to happen somewhere else, like um, and and also we 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 have like experienced also some other challenges using the GSI API, which we we really try to to work around a bit. What's nice is that we really try to rely on as much as possible on existing infrastructure, so namely React Native, GSI, uh, Reanimated. And what's been cool about this is that these infrastructures and libraries, they improve also over time. And as they improve, uh, it also improve uh, React Native Skia. And also, hopefully, we, you know, we are able to, to communicate the use cases, the bottlenecks we experience. Um, for instance, with uh, the team at Software Mansion, the um, communication has been um, uh, very tight, and we've been collaborating on lots of stuff. And so, you know, I was mentioning also the collaboration with Google, but so in the V1 announcement, in the video, actually a lot of stuff that I showed, uh, it's so thanks to some of the contributions that has been made from the Skia team, but also lots of contributions from, from software mentioned. 
So the reanimated integration, the migration to fabric, uh, the animation hooks. This came from, you know, talking with Christophe Maguera and mm. we had many meetings and, you know, we made many iterations. And um, so a lot of stuff comes from um, collaboration with um, uh, Software Mansion and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, collaboration and working together exchange between different companies is, I think, probably the thing that makes the whole React Native community work and, and outstanding, um, like the companies involved, Meta, Microsoft, Shopify, just like a few names. It, it, it's incredible. And everyone's like pushing these and working on a repository. So um, I agree. That's certainly helpful. I, I deeply agree. Uh, I think that's why I really, I genuinely believe that. I mean, there are, there are a lot of reasons. I think React and React Native is like very technically elegant. And like there, there are like some deep technical reasons, but also I think one of the reasons is because we have like this really rich collaboration between very heterogeneous uh, industry players, and uh, and that's how we we get these great technical solutions. Um, yeah, because I think if not, if it's more like top to bottom, it's easy to to end up with like really poor technical solutions, and I don't yeah. So I, I could not agree more, yes. Um, I want to come back to your um, version one release in a minute. I just had one question because you brought it up. So speaking about reanimated, I know reanimated is also what came to me as a, like when I got started with React Native, like the first interaction of animations and moving things around on the screen. So what is like the connection between reanimated and React Native Skia? Do you actually have like a like peer dependency or something or... Uh, can these packages work completely independent? Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's a great question. So the two packages are completely independent. So you will always be able to use uh, reanimated uh, Skia without reanimated. But if you don't, you won't be able to get very far, <laughs> which is fair. Which I think is the same for any other uh, React Native project. Um, so we got started, so first because we used GSI to build React Native Skia, we were not sure about how to do animations. Because if you think a module like React Native SVG, they use a shadow nodes, <laughs> reanimated, that's exactly what it's uh, for, animating um, the shadow nodes, so the story is clear. Um, React Native Skia, we, so we built this GSI API, we had all, it's using its own React renderer, we were not sure what was the story regarding animations. And again, this is where we worked with Software Mansion to figure it out and to make an integration between the two. So that was like the first step. But now we are like digging much further than just a simple integration. So in React Native Skia, all the resources are shared on the same thread. So meaning the UI thread, because we display on the UI thread. And Reanimated is great to execute code on the UI thread. So now we use it to make some sort of instrumentation, like to create textures. So textures are like images that can be animated and shared multiple times across different on-screen canvas. And so there is a lot of uh, interesting things we can start doing because Reanimated provides us with um, uh, a way to execute code on the UI thread. So not a hard dependency, but uh, <laughs> if you have it, you can go much further. <laughs> And, and also the animation hooks. So we've uh, experienced some bottlenecks uh, with using GSI. And so we know how to write code, animation code in GSI, so it's fast. But what we want to do is to hide the implementation details to the user. Don't think about how it should be done. We provide you a hook. Behind the scene, we make sure it's as fast as possible. And again, here we use uh, reanimated to do some of the instrumentation. And uh, uh, so again, not a hard dependency, but <laughs> if you, yeah, it's like the next level if you want to have fun with the React Native Skia. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's fair, fair to say. And, and you just said something, um, yeah, things you can't do otherwise. I think that brings us to an interesting question. So, what can I do with React Native Skia that I could do otherwise? Uh, I would really like to get. Um, somewhat practical here. So, so maybe we can do like two or three little, little examples of like what's possible. Maybe starting with something, what, what is 
an easy thing I can integrate with React Native Skia that I probably couldn't do otherwise? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I think, so what we're familiar with is like things like, for instance, React Native SVG. And so you can do some paths and you can have like some fancy gradients, some simple gradients. Um, as soon as you want to use like other capabilities, so for instance, a shader, so to have like a more advanced gradient, you want an angular gradient, you want to program the gradient yourself using FOD, <laughs> uh, you're going to use Kia. Uh, if you want to do... so. If you think about Figma, mm. and right, I think you, I assume you use Figma, and all the graphical capabilities it has that you won't find in SVG, Skia does. So, for instance, paths operations. So in Figma, you can have like two paths, and you can like subtract them, intersect them, apply Boolean operations on it. You can do the same in Skia. Uh, you can do shadows. You can have multiple shadows, multiple strokes, multiple fields. You can have um, the fields can be quite advanced gradients. You can have angular gradient, you name it. Um, so these are things you can do in Skia. In fact, I think the concept Figma, Skia map like very, very well. So mm. I would say if you get like a React Native design from a designer in Figma, and you're like, oh, how should I do this in SVG? <laughs> Uh, most likely it's doable in, in React Native Skia. Yeah, can it be done in React Native is the right question. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so these are like easy entry ways. Um, what is on, on the other end of the spectrum if we're talking about like more advanced examples of React Native Skia? Maybe you know about some actual big apps using React Native Skia? Are there like um, examples that, that people can check out? Maybe I'm actually using one of these applications and you, you know about it? Um, I think the, the person, the developer who has built uh, the most impressive, I mean, there are two people, I mean, there are many people, but <laughs> two come to mind right now. It's uh, Diamond, Diamond, Diamond Moon on uh, Twitter. I don't know if you follow him. He's building... Uh, like some really interesting and very creative examples in in, in React Native Skia, and uh, is, is he is he building like a game or something? Yes, I think so at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I will put this in the show notes. I think yes. I saw it before. And uh, Enzo Mangano is uh, is also, which I know you know him very well, is also uh, yes. uh, building some interesting example. And what's exciting about React Native Skia because now that you know that you have like the full capabilities. You can look at communities outside React Native to find examples because now you know that you, you are able to do it because we offer you all the primitives. So you can go, you know, people, for instance, there is this famous uh, library called p5.js. Hmm. And there are tons of tutorials and people building incredible examples and lots of creative examples with it. And now you know that you can look at such examples and easily migrate them to React Native Skia. Or any, you know, people like who do generative programming, things like this. So that's the kind of exciting. If you look at the coding train, so any tutorial is showing, now you can apply in React Native. So that's the exciting part is that now you can go outside the community to, to look at uh, interesting examples, things that could be done and, and so on. Oh, nice. I, I wasn't aware of that. So is the, the syntax somewhat similar? I was just checking out P5.js and some examples. I mean, it doesn't look exactly how I envision the, the Skia code. So the there's concept like... are the same. So if I look at uh, like a P5.js tutorial, I, I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I know how to map uh, this concept. But uh, yeah, to go back also maybe to the first point we, we discussed earlier, now it's also maybe time for us to to document React Native Skia a little bit better, make more tutorials so people uh, to lower the barrier to entry and so people can map also this concept uh, themselves more more easily. But yeah, yeah um, I will certainly do my my best myself to jump in that as well. I think my channel has exactly zero tutorials about React Native Skia, so. I will definitely work on this. This is my promise to you. Uh, <laughs> over the next, at least, let's say, next two months, I'm going to release something about React Native Skia. Because, and that brings us back to your latest release, 
Um, by the way, I highly recommend everyone check it out. I will put a link in the notes. Uh, William and his team, they're doing the best videos. Like it's Apple, Apple quality, probably. Uh, the first was, I think, back to the web. And then mm. now it's time to fly. They were both incredible. But tell me more about, because we're, we're short on time. Tell me more about time to fly and version one at Skia. What's new and um, yeah, what's exciting? Um, yeah, so the Paragraph API text layout, this was one of the most uh, requested feature. Uh, this is actually an interesting topic because if you think about 2D graphics, having some text, if, think about a blank screen on a device with some like text written centered. Mm -hmm. It's like the most expected use case. That's what feels the simplest thing to show. <laughs> But if you think about a 2D engine, that's actually the hardest by far yeah. uh, use cases. Even though it looks so simple, it's way harder than any fancy, <laughs> you know, shader you'll see. Or and it's actually there is a lot of literature of uh, why these uh, these things are actually incredibly hard to. I mean, I could mention some of them, but you know, each letter is like a path. You mm -hmm. need to cache each of the path, like using an atlas, then you need to find the, the order of, uh, of each letter, the, doing the layout. So also in React Native Skia, you, you don't have layout. It's like SVG, right? You just, there is no mm -hmm. composition. Yeah. But in text, suddenly you do have layouts. So, and there is a, a great uh, blog article called, um, and we should definitely link to it. It's called uh, Text Rendering Hates You. And it's a, a famous <laughs> blog entry that mentions like all the challenges to, to do text layouts. And um, it's really interesting if you're interested on the topic. So we're really happy to, to finally have this. And it was really hard for us to, to ship this feature on iOS uh, due to some limitations with um, interna internationalization, which uh, have been solved. And um, and then we, we showed the animation hooks. So like I said, we want to hide lots of, uh, so make mm -hmm. zero cost abstraction. We hide the implementation details. We give you some hooks behind the scenes. We take care of making sure everything is uh, up to the snuff. And um, the Atlas API, so we showed these fancy examples which uh, to draw very large scenes. And also that was a common request where people now they start, you know, they maybe they do examples where you have a lot, like thousands and thousands of elements. Mm -hmm. And so we want to provide APIs so you can like in a single draw call being able to, to execute complex scenes. And, um, and we showed the React Native Scotty package done by Margello. So Margello also contributed a lot of things to, to React Native Skia. And you can use it if you have performance issues with React Native Loti. You can use yeah. it as a dropping replacement package. Um, yes. So these yeah, were some of the novelties. Yeah, I think it's it's incredible. And um, just to be clear, this is now version one. This is the stable version yes. one release. Stable. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, to to wrap it up. Uh, what's what's the best way, the easiest way for people today to get into React Native Skia? Because I think with version one, you said it's stable. I think we should all get our hands on it. Yes. Um, and I feel like, to be honest, some of your tutorials, like it's magic, like what you're yeah. doing later and all these things, it, it looks very complicated. So what is the, the easiest way for people to get started right away? Yes, I think the documentation and in the documentation, we have a page where we list all the tutorials from Diane, from uh, Enzo, uh, myself. So you will find all the, and it's like uh, sorted by categories. So depending on the topic, and the documentation is a work in progress, but also, you know, if you go through the documentation, you're confused, you're uh, upset maybe also, <laughs> uh, you know, go on GitHub and, you know, put, put an issue. Right now it's a very hot topic for us. So, you know, I think, you know, directly from the documentation page, you can like file an issue or something. So that's uh, definitely, uh, and we will improve. And um, so that would definitely be how, like the way to, to go. Awesome. 
So uh, I know you got to leave soon. So thank you so much for taking the time, William. No, thank you um, so much. Was it was great. a pleasure getting some some insights into React Native Skia. And uh, I would love to bring you back in the future so we can do like a bit more technical Absolutely. stuff about React Native Skia if people are interested. Just to wrap it up, where can people find more about you or anything uh, you want them to look at? Yeah, I think uh, React Native Skia, I'm also uh, available on Twitter, YouTube, and uh, yeah. Awesome. I'm going to put everything in the show notes, all the links we discussed, and I will hopefully catch you next time. So Perfect. have a great day and thanks for joining me. Buddy. Thank you. See you. Bye. Tschüss.